the in-house money, more or less, of Binance, uh, BUSD, which we found out a couple of days ago is going to basically become the only stablecoin actively used on the uh, huge global trading platform. And uh, that's going to have some benefits for Binance, according to a new report from Bank of America. And it's interesting to look at the numbers here. Uh, in, in a couple of different ways. So you're going to have coins, including USDC and USP, which is a Paxos dollar. I might got, might have that tag wrong. Um, but those are going to be automatically converted to, to Binance's stable coin when they're onboarded onto the platform. That's going to add, uh, according to this estimate, 908 million to the total cap of B BitUSD, uh, Binance USD, sorry. Um, but what's interesting to me off the jump is Oh, sorry, I should rewind. That's going to have a benefit to Binance. That's going to increase the market cap of uh, BUSD by about 5%. Uh, they're, they're currently at about 20 billion, so you're going to get an extra billion out of that. Uh, that's not insignificant, but it's interesting that it's not that big because USDC and the Paxos dollar really don't have that much footprint on Binance, which was interesting for me to find out. Most of the, that, that money uh, from USD is going to come from USDC, which apparently they only have about 800 million or 2% of their total supply is on Binance right now. Um, so that was interesting to see. It, just not that much for USDC. So they're, they're not going to be that much affected. Paxos is much smaller to start with. Um, and only about 1% of their total cap or 10 million is on, is on Binance. So, um, you know, some marginal gain for Binance, which is going to generate revenue because you get to manage that treasury. Um, but, uh, but, you know, not a, not a huge set of moves here in general. Um, but uh, Adam, you want to, uh, What's your, what's your thoughts about this? How big of a deal is this for Binance? And, and the one thing I haven't mentioned is once you start looking longer term, then there are some ecosystem implications that might be bigger. Yeah, I think that this is honestly uh, a lot more attention to this story as it's sort of come out. Like in the, in the beginning, it was like, oh, this is interesting. This is a attack, a zero sum game vampire attack, right? Against like the second largest stablecoin by the third largest stablecoin. And I think that as, as we've gotten more news, it's gotten less and less interesting. Uh, it mm -hmm. just kind of makes sense for Binance to do this. And it seems like the people who they're, you know, the projects that they're, they're uh, disintermediating to a certain extent, uh, like they don't even care. So from that perspective, I think it's fine. Um, from the perspective of like the match between the types of things, if you think about it, USDC and the other t uh, tokens that they're talking about really represent kind of the regulated US perspective on stable coins. And so they present some risk there. And if you look at how Binance works, Binance doesn't allow US customers. So the overlap there between the people who would want to use USDC stablecoin versus something that isn't necessarily, you know, under the sanctioning power of the US government versus something like tether well that actually kind of makes a lot of sense too and <clears throat> and then also excuse me the consolidation of um of markets because previously they did have some markets that traded in these other tokens like that also just makes sense from a liquidity perspective so mm -hmm. i think that you know it at this point we now know enough to say okay this is a logical move that really seems more like it's kind of house cleaning than it is any sort of strategically important thing and you know uh Finance continues to be a really important player in our space, so I imagine that that will continue. Any thoughts on that? What do you yeah, think about totally. it? Are we going to have yeah, totally, this totally, transformational totally or agree. inconsequential? I mean, <laughs> no, no. I think I think I mean definitely I, they did it for a reason, and like Adam said, you know, it it was painted out to be like a power play, and you know. Now, I like this report a lot because it kind of goes into why this, you know, is a strategic and long-term move for, for Binance. It's going to affect the USD in a positive way on so many fronts, from utility to supply to, to revenue. And, you know, I do think, though, to, to include, you know, USDC withdrawals and not USDT, you know, that does, uh, you know, it, it does work as a combined hit at Tether a little bit as, you know, Web3 grows and crypto adoption goes up around the world. Stable coins will increasingly be like the, the lar where the larger general population kind of buy, first buy coming into crypto. So we're going to see some very interesting moves from these kind of larger players in the space going head to head. I mean, 
Here's my thought. In traditional economics and even in the crypto world, sometimes I've mostly heard of forced currency conversions or stopping support happening in the context of economic turmoil or sanctions, not exactly private competition. So I might be totally mm. uninformed on this, but um, it's definitely something to watch. And I think it's, it's, it's such, a, such a cool move, a key move. For Binance at this point. <laughs> just to just to emphasize, uh, I, I I wasn't aware, but they're they're stopping all tether withdrawals. Is that correct? I don't think so. I or, think that they just no, weren't doing the conversion no, 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 going no. in. They, it's, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. They have to manually do the conversion if you want to. Tether is oh, large right. enough customers that customers have to do it. Yeah. Yeah, customers yeah. have to do it. I mean, Tether is large yeah. enough that Binance has Tether trading markets still that are of sufficient size to not really be a concern from a liquidity perspective versus the smaller tokens, where, as you were yeah. saying, like they were a relatively smaller amount um, of volume. So it kind of makes sense to fold those into a much more liquid BUSD market. Whereas for Tether, again, like that's the real big player when it comes to these non-US based markets as far as stablecoins are concerned. And there's a lot of historical precedents for people being very happy trading Tether as a pair with everything else, because Tether then is something that you can then withdraw and pull into a different exchange, whereas BUSD is primarily used within the Binance sort of ecosystem. So, um, I mean, again, it, 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 it makes sense why, why they did it this way now that we have more information. At the time, it was sort of unclear, but, you know, I, I, you know eh, eh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's work. another, that's one final data point to, to really emphasize that I got from this story that I wasn't aware of, which is that 86% of all BUSD is actually just on Binance, um, which is fascinating and, uh, you know, makes the, the case for them overtaking USDC or Tether, I think, a lot weaker than I thought it might have been on, on its face. I mean, it's, it's really just a utility token for trading on Binance for the most part, at least right now. We'll see where it goes from here. Uh, any last thoughts before we wrap this up? I mean, I guess one question for me is what's your, like, if you had to personally use a stable coin and you had to keep the money in it for a month, what stablecoin would you use? For me, it's USDC as somebody who's based in the US yeah. and that's a kind of obvious choice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's really obvious. And and uh I don't think this is gonna hurt that narrative significantly at all. 